All right, so this comes out of API 1131 or 1130. And what it's showing here is I've got data coming in and that data is going into an inference engine. So that's the leak detection system. It's the software that's sampling the real time data and it's performing calculations to determine if the real time data agrees with what it thinks it should be seeing. Okay? And then that calculated data is passed to an alert algorithm and it's comparing what it's getting from the real time data to the alert algorithm. So I got one engine that's saying, I sampled data, it's been this long, here's what the data should be. And I've got another algorithm that's saying, here's what the data should be, here's the data I'm getting, should I generate an alarm? Okay? So these are the various kinds of volume detection. Um, I'll talk about this kind of very quickly. I've already talked about some. So compensated mass balance is kind of mass balance, but I'm also going to take into consideration line pack. Um, and line pack in a, in a liquid system might include slack line, particularly if you've got to pump up and down hills. Slack line is, you know, I've got no zero fluid in the line, right? Um, I've got pressure and flow monitoring. I've got acoustic and negative pressure wave. I've got statistical analysis. So these are more advanced uh, pressure and flow and acoustic negative pressure waves. They require field automation and advanced sensors on the pipeline. All right, so here's another, here's another consideration in all this. So, with leak detection systems, I'm going to get improved accuracy at higher sample rates, right? Because if I sample the data once every 15 minutes, it's different than every five minutes, is different than one every one minute because the amount a system can move and still be in the normal range is greater the longer the period of time between the samples, right? So if I can compress the sample rate, I can make the leak detection operate more accurately. <clears throat> However, there's also what precision of data can I get, right? So if I've got pressure measurement, I can add pressure all up and down the pipeline. But if I put in 8-bit RTU sensors, so I've only got one single 8-bit register of precision, the max precision I can get on that measurement is 0.4% which is probably not good enough to get the kind of responsiveness that I'm looking for, right? If I go to 10 bits, it's 0.1. If I go to 12 bits, it's 0.025, 16 bits. So if I do floating point, full precision, dual register, I can get to 0 0.0015. Well, that is a materially different resolution to 0.4. And in some of these, some of these systems that are using pressure, and they're, they're analyzing pressure response through the system, that resolution makes a very big difference in their performance. So when you're evaluating this decision about how much data, it's also how much precision in the data. And we are constrained by the devices we put in the field. There's, there are some um, tank measurement systems that actually use 64 bits of precision. So they're doing, you know, eight by eight Registers. Well, if you think about if you think about a fifty thousand barrel tank, right? And I'm doing a radar system to get um, level in the tank. Well, that little bit of difference between sixteen bits and thirty two and sixty four is a lot of volume, right? Um, little bit off the subject, but I did a project many years ago with a large LNG facility, and we tried to correlate a one-tenth of a degree error in the temperature of the gas to the financial consideration of the volume moved through the plant. And it's millions of dollars, right? Way beyond your ability to me measure temperature more accurately, but it's still got material financial impacts. So that's why people are going for more precision. <clears throat> All right, so the other part in, in 11.30 is 5.2, and it starts getting into a whole bunch of requirements about how the communications infrastructure actually works. 
Um, what media are you using? Are you know, using serial, are you using ethernet? How does it do error, de error detection? What is the message structure inside of it? Um, you know, one of the cha a lot of people are moving to ethernet radios, which means they've got an IP packet on top of a serial packet, which means for the same bandwidth, I can physically move less data because I've got more overhead in the messaging. <clears throat> Uh, what's my analog dead band, right? So a lot of these systems allow you to tune, you know, my reporting. So if I've got, you know, a 1,000 PSI pressure sensors all up and down the pipeline, and I've, I've, in order to optimize my data throughput, I say, well, if the value doesn't change by 1%, then don't report me the change. Well, that could have a material impact, right, potentially. 